Okay, this might be fun. Let's get to it. I'm rather following you. Okay. All right. Peace, family. 19 Keys tapping in. I'm going to go ahead and get straight to it. Uh, appreciate y'all being here in this video. You know, I just had the urge to come speak to the constituency, all of the keys around the world, all of the super-minded people that want to tap in and develop themselves into the highest flow of focus. You understand me? And superior knowledge and engineer themselves to the greatest version of their destiny. You feel me? That's what we are here for. You did? So let me go ahead and put this on IG so people will know that we're here. Send this out to your mama, your sister, your friend, your ex-lover, your current lover, your babysitter, your brother, your cousin, whoever you need to who feel like they deserve to be tapped in. You feel me? Yeah, family, I'm here on YouTube. Make sure y'all pull up. We just getting started. The topic is how to develop a super mind. Yes, go go in. So now what I'm gonna do is send this, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure you tapping in on all levels, you feel me? Like broken, it's just that it doesn't matter. You know, the 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 I got it. Um, you said my ETH address. Oh, uh, I have these, I have to text that to you. It's not something I can like. You feel me? Unless you go to my, my um, Rarible account, you can copy it from the public ledger. You're on YouTube, make sure y'all pull up. We just get started. The topic is how to develop a super mind. Yes, go go in. <laughs> All right, I see y'all out here. I see y'all out here. Y'all ain't, ain't got me in here by myself, man. What's happening, family? So first, before I get started, man, um, I just want to take some time and I want to thank you all, the audience, the people that do show up time and time again. Um, as we all on this journey of developing ourselves, tapping into some of the supreme knowledge, you understand me? Um, it's not easy, especially in the current world and the climate that we live in. Focus is a high commodity. I'm going to say that again. Focus is a high commodity. It's easy to lose yourself in today's world. It's easy to forget yourself. I won't even say lose yourself. I don't think it's possible to lose yourself because you will always be you, but it is possible to forget yourself. You could be experiencing this life, you know, and you can forget who you are, right? You can forget your power. You can forget your presence and your energy and your potential and your destiny, and that's dangerous, right? So you always want to remember who you are, right? And it's a reason why there's certain things they put a re on, right? Because you are a member of yourself. I want you to remember that, right? So you have to remember yourself, right? And you have organs and your organs have organization. They have to flow in a structure and proper order in order for you to be at your highest level of intelligence in life and so when it comes to remembering yourself you are just organizing things into a proper place order and function right i want you to understand that that's key to understanding how to position yourself to your highest level right you have to remember yourself so that you become a member right of what what are you becoming a member of is the key we are born into this world but even at the early stages of adolescence and infancy there are things for us to remember <laughs> you did so we are all a collection of human existence you feel me and remembering ourselves is key and one of the things i want to talk about in today's topic of the super mind is all about getting into the flow and this is something that i'm working on putting together a, a coaching membership where we are taking those who want to be at the highest level some high level earners and allowing you to have that cycle of transformation and breaking into your highest point and i'll i will do some explaining on some of the things that we will be tapping into and some of the techniques that we'll be utilizing in this organization and uh, I would just warn you all, like, this is not going to be something that's for everybody. It's going to be for specific members who want to reach to that highest echelon, who believe that they are destined to be of the 2%, of the 5%, of the 10% in the world who are high-level achievers, 
who are in constant flow and who are never stopping at a level and just managing contentness, but who is constantly, steadily climbing and growing and developing. Those are the ones that we looking for. Just want to let you know, right? So what is Supermind? You know, as I was, uh, I came up with this name. You know, I didn't come up with the name because I was, you know, um, inspired by anybody else. But the universe gave me this. My super mind tapped in, right? But, you know, there are super mind collectives and there are super mind individuals, right? It can be a group of individuals acting together in ways for super intelligence, meaning that you have access to knowledge, information, skills, uh, ideas that you normally could not formulate on your own, right? Or when we're talking about the super mind, we're talking about beyond the conscious mind, right? And a state of transcendental flow that allows you to be in consistent high level activity. Right. I want you to think about this. And it has a lot to do with, you know, training your brain waves and the neural feedback that you get from yourself. But there's something that we're going to act off of that's an integral part in the way that we're going to focus on building up this community and the members of it and you that's on the other end. You understand me? Because your super mind is something that everybody gets to tap into, but not everybody knows how to. And the how-to is the step-by-steps in the ways that we're going to develop. And all you have to do is follow along and execute, right? So one concept of the supermind really comes from ancient times, right? And then there's some new age times that talk about the supermind and supermind that allows you to boost performance, increase focus, right? And in all areas, whether it's in business specifically to increase profits because when you increase the person you increase the profits because businesses and organizations are made of of people and persons so if it's natural that if you have the most creative people you creating the most creative things if you have the smartest people you're creating the smartest things right if you have super people you're creating super things you have a super organization so you know i've gotten to a point in my life where my family has come to look at me as the one in the family that everybody can now help collaborate and build with in order to get themselves to, you know, a better standard of living because I've allowed myself to get there. And I want you to peep my word in the language. I've allowed myself because everything in society is an allowance. Everything in the world is allowance. And once you get to the place of understanding that, any level you want to reach is just what you allow yourself to do or what you don't allow yourself to do because the possibility exists within the equipment known as your mind. Right? It's like if you have a gun, you shoot somebody because you allowed yourself to shoot somebody. The capability of the gun had all the power, force, and might, but in your possession this entire time, you can choose not to or you can choose to allow yourself to. Your mind is that powerful weapon. You can choose to use it in any capacity, but even if you don't use it, the potential of this equipment is the same. So getting there, right? A mind or something like a mind that is much more powerful than the mind of a typical person, right? What if you could, and I'm reading here, so it says, what if you could pop a pill to make yourself remember more, think faster, or become happier? or high achieving. Most people would love the idea of the simplicity of simply taking a pill and just becoming smarter. Sounds amazing. You know, we got Smart Moss, you feel me? You know, this this live, shout out to Smart Moss and Goldwater. But the idea of just taking a limitless pill and popping it and all of a sudden, you have the ability to have access to more of what? Your own mind. 
But how do you create that natural function? Because we know that there are high achievers, but everybody ain't popping no limitless pill. And even if the pill exists, it's still based upon who you are, right? And soup and, 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 and enhancing who you already are. How many of you all are familiar with the flow? I want you all to get to this. And I'm, I'm going to give you some breakdowns on something. One thing that we're going to be teaching is, you know, the FBI and the CIA, they have these techniques, you know, where they uh, do surveillance on people, right? And if you study the techniques of the NSA, the FBI, the CIA, these different groups, they create files on people right where they monitor behaviors they monitor what you like what you dislike right they monitor your rhythm they monitor your your they create psych profiles a psychological profile what makes you tick your childhood history your sexual history your internet browser history right things you've read what you eat what you're prone to they create an immense powerful foul on you because they need to know how to be able to deal with you or manipulate you or what are your weaknesses, right? So especially if you may be a threat, but they have these files on their own cadets. They have these files on people that work for them, their own members and their own agents. But see, they call it the Central Intelligence Agency. The NSA, right? You got the NSA. This is the highest science programs. And if they do it, I always think, I, I look at those who are at the top with the best of their game, and I say, how about we bring those things to us on a personal level? Because sometimes we stay away and stray away from things because we believe that these things are used in a negative way. But I say, damn, what if I got access to that file? What if I ask the CIA? What if I ask NSA, FBI, I say, listen, can y'all make a file on me so I can read it? I need y'all to make a file on keys so I can read it. I want to know what are my childhood triggers? What am I prone to? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Right? What are my dispositions? Right? What's, 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 I want you to give me a psych profile on myself now why would i want this i want this for the same reason that any government agency would want i want to be able to manipulate myself improve myself i want to know what are my levels that i can reach because they do a test on one person be like nope they can't be in the field no they're not good for this oh no they psychological profile is made up for this oh yep these are their strengths this is a type of intelligence these are the things that they may be able to do if there was an AI machine, give me that, give me that instantly. I want that file right over here with the rest of my files. I want it right here. So I can study myself. And when I go into the depth of studying myself, I'm looking for things to improve. I'm looking for my weaknesses. I need that data. This is the reason why big companies, tech companies, need data. They are trying to get, Google is trying to get data from every single place they can think of. They bought a goddamn vacuum company that traces a square footage of in your household, takes in data to let them know what's in the house, right? What are you buying? How many people are there? Because there's another data point that they can use to create a profile to get you to buy things. The hats are always available at www.crowns19.com. You know, I put that little commercial break in there. You feel me? All right. So, if I'm thinking that I said, damn, man, this is this is a powerful thing that I'm getting to. And this is something I'm about to perfect and go break down. And it's not just keys, not just going to come from keys, but I'm partnering with some folks that actually have connections in the Army. And do these sort of things. I want y'all to understand how massive this program is going to be. It's going to be dope because 
What you all don't realize is that we have people all over the world, but we just don't communicate a lot of times. And they have specialties, but we don't know, always know how to formulate and utilize these things to the best of our ability so they can be positive and or good for us, right? So I said, okay, this this concept, this this is this actually makes some sense because the people want to be more focused, to be smarter, to achieve more, to think better, right? To be more creative to have these breakthroughs, to be more confident, to make more money, they have to tap in to where it allows them to consistently break barriers. So they're in that super mind. And this free game I'm giving y'all right now. Now the coaching go cost, but the game is free. You dig? Anybody can come in the gym, but the training to become the highest level of player like LeBron and them, now that's different. But I give you a free game. I teach you how to dribble, but I can't be there while you're shooting in the gym. You dig? Now, that's going to be for what we develop, but I, I'm, I got these free keys for you. So, listen. Oh, I got a couple texts. So, when we're talking about the supermind and this file, this super file that we created. So, I want you all to really get there with me. And I want you all, before I even tell you, you know, things I may be doing, imagine what you could do with that foul. Imagine how dangerous that is if a person has a psychological profile for you. They know how, what the things you're going to buy, where you're going to shop at, the type of partner you're going to be, be with, the your tendencies to be in relationships for a long period of time, how long you stick to projects, ideas, and they're going to have the reasons why. So now you get to go into this profile and be like, oh, because consciousness gives you power. But when I say consciousness, I mean awareness. So once you have knowledge and you have awareness over a thing, game change. Now that I'm aware of what's possible and what's there, I can look at this data and I can decide to make a change. It's like a doctor come to you and say, listen, the reason that you are obese, the reason that you're overweight is because you eat at these times and these hours and you eat this much, right? Um, and the reason that you're overeating is because trauma that's connected to this breakup. And so now you have the ability to be like, all right, if I change this routine and if I eat this and if I change the reflection on my past, then I no longer have that thing that triggers me to consistently be in this routine of obesity. Right. And I'm simplifying the possibilities here. Right. But what you do any time that you have a sickness, an illness, or anything, you do a diagnosis. You have to have knowledge of the problem. You have to do a diagnosis. So what most of us need and what we never really sit down and do because we don't look at where we at in life as a problem is that we never diagnose our level. Like where you are is a problem. And the reason that I'm saying is not that you can't live a life of comfort and decide to just chill and everybody doesn't have to be at that level. But there's a lot of you all who are uneasy with where you at right now. Right. You want more money. You want a better partner. You want to dress better. You want to be loved. You want greater sociability, more influence. You want to be more focused, less distracted. You want all these things. And so anytime there's a gap between what you want and what you have, there's a problem because your mind has the capability of producing those things you want. But you don't know how. And what's in your way is always you. So if you are in your way, you need to study the impediment of your progress. Which is yourself. So as you start to study the impediments of your progress and you diagnose what these issues and these problems are, now you get to understand how to upgrade yourself, how to get over these issues, how to get over these problems. So these are the things that we're going to be going over, right? How to create these super fouls on yourself. And when I say fouls, I literally mean it. Like, I want you to have a foul. Why do you do certain things? Like, this is... This is I have notes. My notes is like my second brain, right? Where everything I'm studying and researching, things that I want to remember, I put them in notes. When I want to go back to something, I just type in search, keyword, and I can go back to the notes of something I thought of, a good idea, a concept, research, information. It's my second brain, right? Because I know that my brain may not have the ability of perfect recall, right? So if I don't have perfect recall, but your brain at the same time records everything in your subconscious your entire experience throughout your whole lifespan is recorded in your subconscious not every event is prominent enough to stick out so that you have consistent recall and easy recall unless 
it gets ingrained and often it is through emotional heightened emotional states which is why I like i'm gonna give y'all a key when you study it's good to go do a rigorous exercise right afterwards why we have these different states of flow right like if we're studying while we're relaxed our brain can take in this information right because at that point we're allowing our brain to be hypnotized and information to just go in right but in order to lock that information in because we have a lot of things that happen throughout our day but if you think about your day maybe you can recall one or two things that somebody asked you about it because it wasn't that heightened it wasn't that emotional and our brain decided that it wasn't that necessary for you to just have memory of it right but if you connect it to an emotion then your brain be like yo i remember that i know exactly what happened when i was a child this happened because your emotional response right and i'm giving a simplistic breakdown so being able to produce that emotional response is necessary in order for you to create long-term memory as you study as you research and as you develop yourself so when I'm studying something, so, man, I need to do push-ups right afterwards. I need to go run. I need to, I need to do something that locks in this period of time, right? This last hour, so that my brain don't forget. So now I have an association with this heightened state and this information that I took in. Then after that, I need relaxation. The super mind gets rest. I'm gonna give y'all some keys. The super mind gets rest one of the most dangerous things at the foundation of society is having a busy body no sleep no rest society the only time you can do that oftentimes and it's not sustainable for a long period of time you're going to suffer right is when you have a vision that's so locked in and so massive and there's just work and details that you need to do every day consistently in order to get there you did then that's when you can just lock in and people are able to sacrifice because they will wake up because they're operating off the laws of enthusiasm. I'm so enthused to get up. I'm so energized. I don't need to think of anything else. This day is just a blimp in time to get me to this ultimate destination. And you so locked in, you so much into your focus. There's no questioning. There's nothing to understand. You just be every single day. This lifestyle is not something that most people are able to get to most people live a routine zombie lifestyle where it requires no thinking so when you work a job this is the dangers of a job a job that doesn't stretch your thinking doesn't require you to live to do it i'm gonna explain that if you work a job where you wake up it's a nine to five all right and i remember and this is what i worked a job right i remember working a job i get up every single day and i said all right, I'm brushing my teeth and washing my face. You know, make up my bed. You understand me? Uh, maybe eat me some breakfast. You know, get dressed, freshen up, shower, do all that stuff, right? Then I'm going to go. I'm going to go into work after this. I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna get on this highway. Everything that I'm doing is a loop. Nothing is new information. It don't require me to think outside the parameters right of the way i'm already thinking every single day i ain't got to think of nothing new i didn't did this already this is a loop it's just a repeat i don't have to do no thinking most people do not think there's a thing called deliberate thinking deliberate thinking you only allowed your brain only gets so much quality of deliberate thinking a day that you should minimize the amount of decisions critical decisions you make a day to around three to four because each human being has a certain amount of psyche or mental energy that they have for critical thinking and good decision making. So billionaires try to minimize the decision making sometimes once a week. Big decision, once a week. I don't want nothing else. Told my bro Keenan Beasley, he said, Bill Gates and I forgot the other guy's name to do the stock, Warren Buffett only take one meeting a week because you don't you want to be in a hyper performance when you're doing these things it's like you got to think about this an athlete that's training for a game 
you know, imagine you, you, you know, you uh you're a tennis player, right? Let's say I don't know how often they have games, but before they have games, they are training rigorously. So by the time they show up, they are performing at a high level. Thinking is the same way. When you are working every single day, imagine this. A basketball player has to go to work every single day he got a game. What time does he have to train? What time? What time does he have to train? His skills are not going to increase at this. He's going to have a lot of experience, but the skill set will not increase on quantum levels and leaps to where you see super high achievement. You need off seasons. And a lot of us don't understand the value and the rhythm of the off season so we can perform at high levels in that super mind. If Steph Curry had to go on that court every single day and shoot a basketball 365 days a year, 360 days a year, 350 days, whatever it is, he would not be as good as he is. He needs that off season. He needs that training. So by the time you show up, your performance is based on your training and it's of a high quality. In business, it's different. In business, the most quality thing you can do is think. I'm going to say that again. In business, the most quality thing that you can do is think. See, this is why a lot of people, they can spend so much time on a problem and they can never achieve a solution. Because they're constantly in the rat race. They're never stepping back. You're so busy playing the game, you're not developing the skills. I want you, you got to understand this. You're so busy playing the game, you're not developing the skills. See, in life, you got to take step back. I be taking steps back. I don't need to. I will watch people who feel like they're running and they're overlapping you. But they don't realize you're studying, you're learning, you're training. By the time I get back on that field, I will be so much faster than you. It would look disgraceful that you are even in the same race as me. And so thinking is that same thing. So developing the skill of thinking during off seasons is how you show up with high performance. Sometimes your brain be working so well, you know how to manage a certain level and that expectation level is what you learn how to manage consistently. But going to the next level requires the off seasons. Managing a level, you can do that, that's efficiency. Effectiveness requires the off seasons. It requires the training camps. It requires the skill specialists. When they bring in those different people to be like, yo, I've watched your game, I see you, all right, now this is what we need to develop outside of playing. Playing is not when you develop the skill. That's experience. That's refining the skill. But the development happens in the training. You did. So I want y'all to really get that. I, I, I wanted to spend some time on that point because I really want y'all to, to dig into that. Dig into that a little bit. Right? So the super mind. I want you all to think about one area in life that you want to improve. And what it would do for you if you learn to improve it. So I'll give you an example. I know some brilliant people that don't have, don't know how to communicate. They have great ideas, but when they start to speak, it doesn't flow in a manner to where their communication is understood. So they can't get the same resort to somebody who may have less knowledge, less skill, but greater communication. You have to understand and why communication is so powerful because every human being in the world has to be communicated to. You have to be able to grasp attention. So if every single person here increased their communication skill alone, you will see increase in every area of your life, relationships, business, 
design, development, marketing, branding, all these different things. So it's a process. Great leaders know how to communicate, but it requires self-development. Right? Problem solving, creative thinking, creative learning. All of these things require. So I'm going to give y'all some more keys. and pull out some notes real quick. Right? Because I want y'all to get this. And I'm going to level overview. Like I said, we're going to have a coaching membership. It's going to be a little different, right? But this is going to be something I'm going to have fun doing. I'm going to be honest with you. Right? One of the things that is important for you to develop is understanding what is your mental image of yourself? What is your mental image of yourself? I want you to hold that for a second. Because throughout time, your mental image of who you are changes. So if you have a mental image of yourself, you say, okay, if you close your eyes right now, what do you see when you imagine yourself? We all are different, right? You, Some people imagine themselves as great. They imagine themselves a little buffer than they really are, right? They're more muscular in their mind, right? Because that's, that's who they feel like. That's their true version, right? Um, they imagine themselves as more beautiful or they imagine themselves as rich or they imagine themselves as poor. When you see this structure, this person head held up high, are they smiling, right? Are they uh, sociable? Do people like them, right? Are they are they focused? Like, what is your mental image? This is this is this is so important that it makes it breaks people because some people have a poor mental image, and you can only develop yourself based on your own mental image. So before every level I get to in life, I imagine it. Play it out like a movie. I'm very imaginative. I play in my mind first before I live it in reality. Everything created twice. Once in the imagination, then in reality. All right? So I play it out in my mind. I said, damn, Keys, you are the greatest speaker in the world. What does that look like? I can see you on stages with tens of thousands of people in front of you. I can see you developing yourself into a point of spiritual guru-ness where there is 100,000 people in front of you meditating. I can see you speaking on TV shows as an expert in all these different categories and groups. I can see See where it starts? It starts in the mind, the I, E-Y-E, the I, imagination. What can you see for yourself is a key to yourself. You have to be able to see it for, because if you can't see it, you can't believe it. You can't produce it. If you can't direct it. Come on, man. So life is a movie. You got to be able to direct that. Man, I appreciate everybody going crazy on the chat with the super chats. Appreciate you, Hisako. His Oka. I'm not sure I said it right. But you have to be able to see it to produce it. So for my life, I'd be sitting down. I'd go in my super mind. I'd be like, all right, what we want to create? You can play with life like that, right? What we want to create? All right, boom. What type of relationship? Damn, all right, what type of woman you want one of them? Beautiful, you want to be smart, you want to be this. All right, how long is it going to take for you to develop? I start, you imagine that relationship. You imagine yourself going through the periods of breakthroughs in that relationship, getting to a better place. Y'all looking good, dressing good, smelling good, vibing, going to different environments, being at this high level, being loved, appreciated, affection. Like you go through the whole template in your brain, in your mind. But there's something you have to do after you start playing in your imagination is you have to figure out, now how do I develop this? See, now in your imagination, you got a vision. Now you need a business plan. All right, boom. It's the same thing. If you got a product you want to bring to fruition, all right, boom. I can see the bottles going to be gold. We're going to have these stickers. They're going to be holographic. We're going to do this, everything. So, boom. So, now what's the business plan? 
What's my target segment? What research I need to do? What type of business leader I need to be in that capacity? What type of skills I need to develop in order to be a business leader? Hey, Sako, I'm gonna answer your question in a second, brother. We're gonna break that down. A super mind can answer anything. You gotta be able to go in your mind, man. It's just so powerful. Right? This shit is powerful, man. So I say, boom, I can develop anything, but I have to be able to build it. Because in your mind, you have a vision, but you have to learn how to create a prototype. I'm working on a product right now, and I got a consultation earlier for someone, and it was giving me a breakdown on the steps I need to bring the product to life because I got a vision for it. They said, well, you need this mechanical engineer. You need this electrical engineer, right? You need a CAD designer. You need somebody that can design out the prototype design. Then you have to make sure you go going to get the right manufacturer. You need an industrial manufacturer that can handle maybe 10,000 units. Then you have to figure out R&D. How do you keep your costs low while you're doing these different iterations? You need to make sure it works this way. So I'm getting my consultation. I got my vision already. But now I'm getting consulted on how to bring the vision into reality so that I can bring it into production. So now that I've went to somebody who has experience, because this brother's an engineer, now I have some of the pieces to bring it to life. You did? I got some of the pieces to bring it to life. But I got it all start with the, I got to be able to see it for myself. I see people wearing it. But how do you get to from where you are to where you want to be is knowledge. And how fast it takes you to get there is work ethic. How fast you go work? How smart you go work? How creative you go work? How you gonna be able to go from A to B? How what's your quickness level? You did what's your speed? So once you got the vision, it's blueprint next, right? You, you, you got to be able to blueprint. It's best to get consulted on these things so that the consultation allow me to skip mistakes that I don't have to make. I'd rather pay for those, bro. I'll pay you thousand dollars two thousand dollars shit if it, I, here's the crazy thing i pay you ten thousand dollars if you're gonna help me not make a hundred thousand dollar mistake because now i'm saving ninety thousand dollars by paying you ten thousand so you in turn really made me ninety thousand dollars i want you you have to think about money like that you have to think about life in that capacity but see, some of us, we think so transactional that we can't see how we are solving problems in the future. And that's what intelligence is. Intelligence is solving problems in the future. You're thinking steps ahead. That's what the supermind does. I need to think steps ahead. So we're perfecting these things before the problem comes up. For every problem, there's a solution. So hell yeah, bro. How much? How much? Because if I'm paying, I'm paying for their time, their coaching. Tell me how much teach me. I want to learn. Think about that for a second. So as you're developing, right? And, and somebody said, dang, I wish my brain worked like that. I want you to imagine your brain working like that. Imagine your brain working like that steps ahead. It, here's the thing. like I, I Sometimes you look at somebody at step 10 but you never think who is this person at step one they was just like you my brain in a way that i process information was not always the way it is now i used to not think i was that intelligent because i was given tasks that i felt like i was being too slow at and in my mind i felt like i was smarter but the confidence wasn't connecting to the execution right my older brother used to have me doing stuff and i'd be like damn man why am I not exceeding at this? He asked me to do stuff that I feel like is beyond my level right now. I feel like I, I'm not the greater communication and bro got more confidence in me than I have in myself. So I went on a journey of self-development. It's a, it, listen, all of this is a process. I'm seeing my father go week to week, do YouTube videos and learn how to develop to utilize technology at the age of 60, at the age of 70. So like young people, I don't believe in the I'm too old, I can't change. You have to break that. You just got to imagine it for yourself. So every level of life, you can have an upgrade, right? So can you imagine it for yourself? 
can you imagine? I want you to think about that. The process is the most beautiful thing. Why I say that? Because every single day you got to live. What else you going to do with life besides go through the process? Like that, Now, this might sound crazy, like, but what else are you going to do with life? Think about that for a second. There is nothing else to do. Nothing else to do but go through the process of life. I'd rather be consistently improving a life than flatlining. Think about that for a second. I just really want y'all to get that on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis, you can do something every day that improves you, or you can do nothing every day that has no level of improvement and you feel like life is getting harder because you're not getting better. I'll give you a case in point. If you, if every day you are running with someone and they said, okay, every day we're going to increase the speed at one miles per hour, right? So we're going to run a little faster every single day. So you working out with this person and you running, you understand me? Or you walking, you start off walking, they get to walking a little fast, but you don't increase your speed, right? You don't increase your speed. All of a sudden, they feel like they leaving you behind. Well, they be like, listen, I, I, every day you keep going at the same pace. I'm going at two miles per hour. I'm going at three miles. Now, if you think about it, the person that's going faster than you, they not increasing their speed at that much. They've been doing it day by day, but since you waited and you haven't been, every time they're doing it, they 2X and they 3X and they 4X and they 5X and they 10X and 11X and 12X, and it get to a point where they're running 100 times faster. Now you feel like, God damn, it's going to take me a long time to be able to catch up to that, but their body is developing in the function to, be, to get used to that rhythm and that pattern and that conditioning. But, but since you weren't improving, everybody else's level feels like that shit is far. But it's only because every single day, they did it a little faster. They improved a little more. But see, when you look at the results, all you see is somebody running 100 times faster. And then while you're watching, the whole time you complaining about being behind, but you're still not improving your pace. And this is the danger of society today is everybody is watching people improve into their super mind and into their super self, but they're not improving their pace to catch up. Because I promise you, if you are improving, people never seem that far from you. You'd be like, oh, I can do that. I see what it takes to get there. I just got to increase in this level. It's going to take me some time, but yeah, bro, got a head start. Or, you know, they got, they got, you know, they got more resources, but it's possible. The most dangerous thing is to watch somebody consistently improve while you're not moving. Because now it's going to feel like that. Well, now they're too far. I can't do that. This is how we feel sometimes, right? This is how we feel. So the supermind doesn't do this. The supermind say, listen, I'm going to start with today, and I want to improve every single day. And eventually... I will be at the level of people that I admire. And once I get to their level, I have a choice to maintain that level and plateau there, or I can go further than them. All you're doing is catching up. But you don't want to get caught in a compare cycle. It's just you. See, the most dangerous thing in that analogy is that if you were running at the same pace as that person every day, you wouldn't be comparing yourself to them. You'll be only looking at your own self-improvement and or people that are going faster than you two. So for me, it's me versus me every day. How can keys get better? How can I retain more information? How can I communicate better? So I study and I learn techniques that allow me to improve the process. I put them into my file. So now I have a profile of myself. And the more that I study about my personality, the more I study about my emotional intelligence, the more I study about my type of intelligence, I study on my childhood traumas, I study on my stories, 
I study on my strengths and my weaknesses, my background, my psych my psychological profile, right? My environmental impact of growing up in my environment or being around certain people or even being in a middle child family or growing up in a Muslim household. I have to study all these things so I can see what developed me into becoming who I am. And the moment that I get to have a higher perspective of myself, it gives me the ability to control myself and tinker things and upgrade where I feel like these things could be better. Well, you know, when you're talking to people, you can speak to people a little better to get better results. You know, when, you, when you're working on projects, you can figure out ways to either bring people on the team that can help you get these projects out faster and better and or learn these processes yourself. So as you're going through the flow of things, you're executing better. These are the things that I can figure out. So being able to create these profiles of yourself and developing your super mind, it, it, it's key. But getting into your flow is the whole entire thing. How many of you all understand the concept of flow? What's your concept of flow? You understand me? This is very important. I'm going to give you all the key here, man. You have to become nothing in order to become everything. Write that down. And this is something you can build on. One thing that in society we've got away from is philosophy and philosophical processes of philosophy, right? And philosophy to me is the art of thinking. And this is why when people share their philosophies, other people now feel attacked. This is the most dangerous thing I've seen in society. I'll say it again. say this again because this is this is key we've gotten to this point when people share their philosophies other people feel attacked because we no longer have a society of philosophers there was times of great philosophers and these philosophers did the thinking for society they thought through problems of love through technology through theology through spirituality right through religion through politics right through science through, you know, uh, self-actualization and realization and, you know, economics and all these different things. And people would flock around and just listen to philosophers talk and think. The art of thinking. It was a beautiful practice that was appreciated and admired. Today, when a person shares their philosophy, other people feel attacked as if, no, you can't think that. So now we are thought police. Because people are personalizing everything because we have such an individualized society. When a person is speaking from a high level and they're thinking of, yo, I'm talking about society here, but you are personalizing it because everything that you now do is based on your individual perspective and reality. But I'm thinking about the grand scheme of things. So we got a dangerous society that we live in to where people are not allowed to give their philosophical perspective on reality without other people feeling attacked. And it's a weakness of society rather than a strength that stagnates growth. You dig? So we got to get back to that. We have to have these philosophical endeavors and things that we go upon and as we grow and as we talk it. You have to be able to listen to other people's philosophies in life because you're getting a gift when you're doing that. You're getting the insight of someone else's mind. People can shut up. People can not say nothing. I don't want people to shut up. I don't want people to not say nothing. I don't want people that I disagree with to not talk. I need and I want to hear these perspectives because every time that I do, I'm gaining exposure and growth because I don't think like that. So I want to hear people who think differently. If think about this is this is an analogy of perspective. If you have a four-sided, let's say you have this four-sided box, 
and each person is standing on each side. You have four people standing on each side. And each side has a different art and a different message, right? And a key to life. Now, each person that's standing on each side will be gaining a different key, will be observing it from a different lens, a different view, getting a different perspective. Now, let's say the rule is you're not allowed to see anybody else's side besides the one that's in front of you. So the power of perspective is the only way that you will know that's on the other side of these boxes is if the people share their perspective with you. I might not like what they have, but now I have the perspective to know. Right? So perspective allows me to gain things that I normally wouldn't get because I'm not on their side. I'm not at their viewpoint. I can't live and see through their lens. And when you learn to appreciate the exposure of perspective, everything grows you. Everything grows you. Now, Brother Hisako asked me, can I teach him how to make 10K with my e-commerce business? This is my last $28. Now, Brother, I want number one, I am not responsible for your last $100, $28, $20, right? You never want to build from a place of desperation. But I will tell you this. I'll give you some game. I'll, you know, I develop. Because there's no, you know, the, the quick answers is... is not gonna work if you have something that's already not working it's most likely not gonna work right you shouldn't throw fire on damp wood you know what i'm talking about think about what that analogy means and i'm gonna get to it because i don't want to lose process of the thought that i'm having right now but there's so many ways to make money today that you literally have to ignore it right in order to be good at being broke I want to say that again it's so much knowledge money be you know money money be calling man you have to get good at doing nothing and good at procrastinating and good at being broken in society and i'm gonna give you this chain right here's here's the here, take this game listen to this real quick i don't know who you follow but if every day i wanted to sit on this couch in my crib and it's a comfortable nice couch too beautiful green luscious right every day i want to sit on this couch it will be very hard for me to do so because I would be, I would have to ignore everything, right? Because I got so many opportunities and things that would be screaming and shouting at me. Keys, why are you being lazy? Keys, why are you not doing this? Keys, these people are trying to book you. Keys, yo, we should have this course run. Keys, let's do this merch. Keys, let's run the tour. Keys, let's do it. The money literally be shouting at me. So I would have to get so good at ignoring the money in order for me to master becoming a couch potato. To just sit there and procrastinate. And let me tell you, this, this happened not just to me because I built up where I am right now. This happened to everybody. How many of you all scroll, scroll on Instagram and somebody like, yo, I got a course. Let me teach you about trucking. Let me teach you about crypto. Let me teach you about stocks. Let me teach you about how to run an e-commerce business. Yo, how about you get into YouTube and you can make money and monetize? Yo, how about you get into TikTok you can make money? Yo, how about you write an e-book? Yo, how about you create a project and do wholesale on Instagram or, or or Shopify. Yo, did you know Instagram is now allowing monetizers to create reels? Yo, all of these, this is just money shouting at you. Just money shouting at you all the time. Yo, you can now do affiliate marketing. Yo, I got this affiliate program. There's never been a time in the history of society ever have money as shouted this loudly, ever. You know how good you got to be to ignore all those opportunities every single day? You have to master the art of procrastination. It's just the difference of how bad you want it. See, a lot of you, 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 you think you on bad luck. No, you don't really want it. What you don't want is the issues and the problems. You don't want the bills. You don't want the debt. You don't want the stress. You don't want the depression. You don't want those things. But how bad do you want the good things? It's different.
I just the, see this this is this this to me is it's a reverse of thinking. A lot of people that's in a bad situation, they don't want the bad, but they don't want nearly as much of the good as much as they don't want the bad. So you magnify that what you think about and you're connected to emotionally the most. See, you don't want the debt, but how much do you want an abundance of money in your bank account? That's a completely two different things. And I need y'all to understand the energy that you're putting into it. Because if I really want 100000 that's different than me not wanting to be broke. That's different than saying, yo, I really do not want these bills. I really don't want my, I really want to have the ability to do what I want. But how bad do you want that? You have to want that more than you want the negative. And a lot of people don't want the good as much as they want the bad to go away. But see, I'm different. I want the good. So therefore, I'm going to create the good. You don't want the bad. But you're only giving energy towards the bad. You're not giving energy towards the good. Just think about that for a second. I'm going to let that marinate and soak in for a second. You might not want to be broke, but how much do you want to become an author? You might want, you might want to make money off ebooks, but how much do you want to become an author, though? You understand me? How much do how much do you really want to write that book? See, so you might want the results, but how much you want the process would develop and determine your execution. See, I wanted to become an author more than I wanted to sell my first book. I wanted the accomplishment of bringing the thoughts outside my head and providing value to the people and hearing the testimonial value more than I ever wanted to sell a book. You can't make your goals attached to your problems. You got to understand it, man. Let me say that again, man. You can't make your goals attached to your problems. And a lot of y'all make your goals attached to your problems. So you want money because of a problem. You want this accomplishment. Nah, 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 nah. You don't make your goals attached to. And <laughs> those are two different things. Now, your business model can solve a problem because that's a good business. But you don't make your goals attached to a problem. I don't do that ever, ever. My goals ain't got nothing to do with my problems. Because then you're focusing on your problem, not your goal. Come on, man. It's just reversal. So what do you really want? Because that's the thing that's going to allow you to have progress in life. Not what you don't want. What do you really want? And so when you start operating from a different place, you magnify something completely different in your life. Case in point, relationships. When you're in a relationship, people will, or not in a relationship, people think about what they don't want so much that they don't really give that same amount of emotional energy to what they actually want. I hear women, are the, well, I don't want nobody to treat me like this. I don't want nobody like this. I don't want nobody like that. I don't want no nigga to do that. I don't want, damn, girl, you, should, you, you know what you don't want more than you know what you do want. Come on now, like, this is my point I made about toxic masculinity. You you can describe to the T the men that you don't want, but if I ask you to describe to the T the man that you do want, oh, I don't know. I can ask the average woman on the street, yo, can you describe what's toxic masculinity? Man, she gonna have a list. Man, she gonna have a list longer than the Taj Mahal. That list, list gonna look like the, the China Wall. I say, well, can you describe what healthy masculinity is? She gonna be like, well, I, I don't know. I think it's like she don't know. Couldn't tell you a goddamn thing. Could and be drawing blanks because we so filled with the mastery of what's negative, what's our issues and problems, but we don't have the same level of mastery to what we want, and so we often think we're not successful. And this is where I'm gonna mess you up with this. You are successful. You just don't like what you're successful at. Our brain is always working. Let me your brain ain't working. Your brain did. But whatever's inside your brain, you're producing. 
So this is how you start to change your paradigm. Whatever's in your brain you're producing, you successfully getting bad partners. You're successfully staying broke. You're successfully failing at the things you want to succeed because that's what you have in your mind. See, you can't get past, you, you got to get into the metaphysics of this when you're talking about the science of the mind. It's, it's working the whole time, but you think it's not working because you don't like the results that you're achieving from the work that you're producing. I want you to, that's to think about that, my boy. Nah, it's working. Your mind never stopped working. You just don't like what you're successful at. Has to think about that. So, all right, so this is what we're doing now. So, the reverse is magnifying, and only this is why people tell you, yo, you got to cut certain people out of your life, change environment, so that your environment is only geared to things you want to magnify. Yo, like, I want you to understand how powerful this is, right? When you want to change something in your life, change everything that you consume, right? So let's say if you want to become a better speaker, the way the brain works, if you start listening to information and reading information on becoming a better speaker, your brain will start internalizing and processing it, even if you don't understand it completely, and synthesizing that information that will automatically giving you the confidence to believe you are a better speaker, right? Because you are now programming yourself for these things. You want to become more focused, watch people who are more focused, listen to people who are more focused. Your brain will start manipulating and magnifying you into this person of things you consistently expose yourself to. You want more money only be in environments of wealth and focus, only be in environments and around people who are doing good and being good. And when I say only, I mean that. And I want you all to understand that easy is, is, is a part, it's not a part of the process. Easy ain't gotta be a part of the process. It can be the hardest thing in the world to do, but you have to tell yourself I'm capable of doing it. You have to do things as hard like they easy. That's how you get to greatness. See, somebody who got a super mind, a small things to a giant. While one man sees an impediment, he sees blocks, he sees barriers. Another man just sees a step. You understand me? And every step is just a stage for your next act. I just, I, I really want us to understand that because if we can get our mind tuned to this place, just by, I want y'all to understand this. This is something you don't understand, right? Just by listening to me right now, right? Just by listening to me now, you improving yourself. Whether you want to it or not, you're going to go to sleep. I want you to go to sleep around 10 o'clock tonight. I want you to get eight hours. You will go to sleep and your brain wiring will change just by listening to this. It's the super mind, man. But see, the art of thinking has is, 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 it's not been taught. Society does not curate this properly. Right? It's dangerous. Because once you get it, how the hell you go control people that know how to think for themselves? <laughs> it's crazy. Right? So Money is something that everybody wants. Money is something that everybody wants. Why? Because money has electrical charge. When you think about money, you feel like you're about to get energized. I want you to think about this. Think about the feelings that you have towards money. When you think about money, you don't even realize you think about energy. If I get this money, I'm going to feel, I'm going to be, I can get this. You're going to feel charged up. If somebody hands you 10,000 right now, you feel 
oh shit, they just hit me with a jolt of energy and electricity. That's powerful. That's powerful. Money got an attractive, energetic field connected to it. But there's everybody is wanting to pull that money to them. That same dollar you fighting for, somebody else want that? So what I changed was, of course, we don't chase money. We don't do that. What I changed was the concept of creating value versus chasing. See, chasing a dollar means by, think about chasing a dollar. I want y'all to visualize this. Remember, it's what you can see. The moment you think about chasing a dollar, you think about a dollar running away from you. Am I right or am I wrong? You chasing a dollar, and you have to be chasing something because it has to be an act of going away from you. See, it's, it's all messed up, man. It's, it's all messed up. Just your whole formula of thought. You have to start it off right there. You got to you gotta change. And then you ain't going to find no rich person. They say, man, I'm out here chasing a dollar. I'm chasing money. Ain't none of them doing that. The, you you Anything that you chase is running away from you. I ain't chasing nothing. Now I want you to change in your mind. I want you to think about something. You have to think about something money wants. Listen, I'm about to get, hey, listen, man, it's about to get good. This is about to get good. Think about something that money wants. What does money want? What the money want from a Tell me uh, what the money want from a yeah. What does money want? So you think about how to go chase money, you don't be thinking about what money want. It's different. What the money want from a tell me. So I start thinking, what do money want? The money wants something real simple. You know that, right? Most money won't value. Well, what's value? So I, in my mind, it ain't money. I ain't chasing money. In my mind, when I think money, money is chasing me to the point it's like I got a, 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 a like one of them uh, fishing poles, something on the other end, and I got bait, and the money just coming after it. I got the bait, and the bait is just hooking the dollars. The bait just going crazy. You gotta. I want you to change the story of money in your mind. Because it's a metaphysical entity attached to these things when you do it. See, you the moment you thought you was chasing it, you actually start pushing that shit away from you and making it harder for you to catch up. Making it harder for you to get a lump sum and a lot of it. And what you did is put yourself in a race forever. We don't want races. We don't want to be in no chases. So now, the thinking man says, I huh? don't I get this goddamn money to chase me, man. I got to create value. Let me show you a way I created value. Boom. That's one of the things. Oh, I created something of value. I created value and gave it value. I got my book over here. Hold up. I created some value. I created some value. I got products, services, value. Now, <laughs> just think about this for a second. I created value. Now, it, 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 once you create value, you have to figure out a way to put it in front of people in a manner to where they are ready to exchange their money for that value. Now, a brother said he wanted to make $10,000, right, a month. So let's let's calculate that, because the super mind says that it ain't no goddamn problem. Ain't no problem. Every problem, there's a solution. All you got to do is imagine it, right? So the super mind says, all right, boom. All right, so the brother said he need to make $333 a day. He need to make $333 a day. So now you have, and this is the, the most beautiful thing you can ever do is write, write it down, right? 
So now you have exactly what you want, right? And now you know how much you need every single day in order to get that, right? So that's 333. So let's say now you could have a product. Let's say if you broke that down into a product, divided by three. If you got a product that's $111 and you have to sell three of those products every day, or you can break that down, divided by two, $55 product, you have to sell six of those every single day, right? Or you can break it down further and you got to sell nine, right? The more you break it down, the lower or the, 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 the cost versus quantity, you got to do that calculation. You got to do that calculation, right? So if you got a $20 product, a brother said, let's go with $25. I like $25, actually. You understand me? I like $25. So let's say 25. Boom. All right. So let's say. 25 you got to sell 13 of 13 25 dollar products i once met this brother i seen he was on a corner he had a stack of books and his books he had a table and he was literally on the street and his books was how to hustle and win or something of that nature it wasn't that title because that's my other brother book and i've seen a brother and i respected his energy so much that i went and bought the book i seen him years later Thank me, he was in a much better position, doing a whole lot better. And every day, that brother had to get out there. And if he wanted to make $10,000, he had to sell 13 books per day. Now, what he could do is every single day that somebody walks past, he have a clicker. He would take attendance to how many people are walking by every single day. So let's say he getting the traffic of, you know, you're on the streets, you might get 1,000 people a day, right? So then he would calculate the percentage of people that he need to convert every single day in order to get a sale. Now, that same street corner is a commerce corner on your Shopify store. In the Shopify store, they give you a conversion rate. They tell you you convert at 3%, 5%. High numbers is like 10%. That's crazy, right? Most only converting around 3 to 5%, right? Those are good numbers of conversions in a commerce world, right? Depending on what you're selling. So what you would have to do is figure out how to increase the amount of traffic based on your conversion rate. You understand me? So if I'm only getting 3%, then, and I got a thousand people coming, now I need to increase my corner traffic, right? I need to increase my corner traffic. So now what increases your corner traffic? See, a lot of times people go direct, but you got to start breaking everything down in formulas. You can spend money on apps that will increase it by creating set certain customer segments and targeting them. Or you can create content connected that will allow people to come in. Now, how do you create content around it? I hired one of my younger brothers to create content for me every single day throughout the whole entire month because I want to pay him. But I need to make sure that I can make profit from the content that he's creating every single day. Right. And it's going to be centered around these crowns. So if I'm paying him a certain amount, I need to break down how much I need to make in order to get back what I need. But if his content is increasing traffic, then all he's doing is helping multiply my conversion rate. What a lot of people have, if you are, if you have a product that's selling, what you're most likely missing is traffic flow and understanding your customer base and the type of value that they want. Because that customer flow represents a certain amount of money. So think of it like fishes. If every single day, you have 10,000 fishes that come by, right? You got 10,000 fishes. Now, it's your job to try to figure out with the bucket you have, how many fishes you can scoop into, right, your boat. You can't get them all. And if you take that same analogy and you add it to money, every single day, if that's 10,000 people, that's 1,000 people on the corner, whatever it is, they represent a dollar amount. This person, average person spending power is what? 
Let's say the average person spending power is $100. A thousand people come, that's $100,000 that come by you every single day. That has a possibility to spend $333 with you every single day. Your job is to get this possible $100,000 spending power to spend $333 with you every single day. And then all you have to do is break down what is that percentage? How many people that looks like? How many people I need to talk to, right? What are the type of products I need to look for? Oftentimes when you have an e-commerce platform and or shop, you're not going on the back end studying those analytics. What are they looking at? What products are they adding? What type of colors are they adding? How do I double down on the things that people want and or need? This is how you're getting more fishes that's coming by so now you can increase the amount that you're scooping in every single day. When you see a customer, when you see a view, it represents a dollar sign. I want you to understand it in business, right? In business. Why? Because everybody has a certain amount of buying power. Everybody got a certain amount of buying power. What do the average people see? Studying your analytics is key. What do the average person spend money on? Being able to do market research is key. Well, they only spend the average of average person. Let's say if you sell books or you sell clothes, you sell this average person spend fifty dollars, right, or two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars a month. Now you're trying to get into their budget. See, when you start thinking from this frame point, you build business in a different way. Then I hope I get lucky, because now it's just formula, it just become numbers at this point. Just become numbers. Oh shit, I just need to, if, if, if on my page daily, let's say it's a million people that come by, how much money is that watching me? If every person got $10, that's 10 million. Everybody got $100, that's 100 million. This is why Instagram don't let you see, don't, they not gonna notify all 500,000 people that follow me they show me on the back end, I have over a million plus non-followers. So those are the people that are engaging with you, watching you, but they never click the like button. This traffic flow is crazy. When I had a store in California, in Oakland, downtown, I'd be lucky to get, you know, 100 people to come in and shop on them slow days. On them heavy days, you know, you may get a couple hundred people. It's on a good traffic day. Thousand people got to be a parade down there. So what does that mean? This is why when I worked in retail, we did, we, we counted how many people came in there. So we would know what is our conversion rate and whether what we did for that day was good. Because you can have a day you consider to be good. And let's say you have a day where you do 10,000 in that day, but you had a million people come to your shop. That's not a good day. But you say, well, every other day I did zero. Every other day I did 100. Well, those conversion rates was higher than when you got the million people. Because you converted a larger percentage of a smaller audience group. So no, you have to determine your good days based on your traffic flow and your data. This not a good month based on the amount of people we had. Wait a minute. This is why... They look at your analytics and they'd be like, what did you do last year? We can tell you if you're on a trend to do better. What is like you go get QuickBooks and go look at your financial statements. It will let you know if you are on trend to make more money based on your deposits, based on your spending, based on what's going on. It'll let you know if you're on trend and make more money than you did last year. So you can track and see if you're proven, improving financially. But see, the numbers and the data is what we be afraid of. And it's not that difficult. It gets super simple. You got to keep your conversions high. So now when you're making content, and I, I teach this in my book, you know, 19 C's of content. I teach you how I create content. I teach this in a bundle pack. You know, I, I, I gave that. That's a $25,000 value that I allow people to get for $200. Matter of fact, I took it away for a long time. I'm bringing it back for y'all you text bundle to 323-577-6692, you get the bundle pack, $199. It's on you. If you can get it tonight, that's on you. 
it's on you. I texted, I put it right there. So you got to tonight to grab that. But in that pack, I teach how to create your own book and you know, uh, under three weeks. And now I got some, ooh, and this new BW, I'm gonna teach a new version because I got some new tools that you can add. Guaranteed, you put this out, you gonna make 10,000. Why I say that? Because I'm doing it based on student results. I had a student, he was a chef. I taught him how to utilize my formula, how to embed these certain codes into the book and barcodes and all these different things. And blood, man, he made 10,000 his first week. I was proud of him. I have had students that done six figures. I've had students that created their own courses, that had best-selling books. I don't even be bragging off all the testimonials. I changed the way people think entirely, not just how you make money. I changed the way you think entirely. That is my goal. And each time I do one of these things, it's magnetic. And, and you got to understand BWO is only taking long for the rollout because there's so many people that want to be a part of it. I just talked to a DeFi group. Is these white guys that got this DeFi group, but the way they have their program set up in a way that they help people make money and set up their own banking I'm trying to determine on whether this is going to be a good partnership in one segment of the BWO. Then I work with my brother from Cheat Code. You know, they're going to handle a different part. Then I'm working on my side that I teach when it comes to the blockchain of things, utilizing the AI tools, text to image. There's so many different things that I want to teach, but it's like doing it on here is one thing, but I don't have the passion to just consistently come on here and just dump information on YouTube. Coaching memberships is different than courses. Coaching membership where you are now in a group, we give you the courses, but we'll go over the information with you so to make sure that you develop, grasp, and execute, and you are producing results based on it. My job is to lay out a foundation, a curriculum, or create the right environment to give you the tools, and then your job is to execute, to go over the material, to go over the training, to go over the learning. Right, but you have to have and see that for yourself and want that for yourself in order to get those results. Ain't for everybody. So it's gonna be an intake form before people get into the BWO. Cause I want I want I want people that's like, yo, I ain't gonna lie, I took this and added this to my formula. I developed this. I want people that get results. That's it. I don't want just anybody just running off the street and they in there. So it's going to be crazy. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be magnetic. I'm just saying. But developing that super mind is not easy, but it's the most necessary thing you can do and the most powerful thing you can do. And I'm working on this program with some high level net worth individuals, accomplished people to actually help me bring out this super mind. So it's not even going to just be me, even though I can teach it by myself. But what I'm doing right now. I know where I want to go and I know where I'm going. I have a high level tour that I'm planning right now to do a global tour. We have a lot of tour dates, a lot of cities. It's going to be crazy. And I love y'all and I appreciate y'all for being here and listening. Uh, first of all, and I want to dial it back to the beginning message of this. What is supermind? Supermind is when you are focused or in the flow state. Is when you are in that state of high level achievement. You understand me? High level achievement. When you are a high level thinker, a high level observer. You understand me? And being able to give you the tools to create these files on yourself, to understand yourself, to build yourself, to have all these things that you can use throughout life as you move that increases your confidence, increases your communication skills, increases your productivity, increases your focus what we want in your life is increase whatever you now have we want you to 10x and this should be possible by doing the work you understand me if you didn't have it on your spirit if you feel like oh well i'm not that type of person i want you to rewrite the language that's in your brain when you think and react to things i want you to every time you get that say nope i am that type of person I am. You have to challenge yourself because yourself is going to have all these reinforcing things that confirm what your identity is. And that's what they call, that's your hardware. In computers, they call it the firmware. It's that part that is very hard to change in a computer. And this is the part of yourself that you have to constantly, what I like to call is lock and unlock. 
The locking and unlocking in neuroscience is when you are allowing yourself to grow new thoughts. How does this work? There is literally is a picture they can show you at the moment that a neuron in your brain forms new thought. You can see it growing. Literally, there's, it's beautiful. But it's also a picture that shows where the brain is detaching from an old thought. So things that you once thought weren't possible, it detaches. This is what's happening in your brain. You learn new information, then you lock in a new perspective, a new thought, superior knowledge. So through this process, inshallah, we will be taking you through the unlocking and relocking. And that's what happened, of course, through the keys. Um, stay tuned to what we got going on, man, because these, these projects that I'm working on is going to be the ones that I put passion and life and energy into. And I, I'm the most excited about than anything that I've done, like passionately excited about it, because it's going to allow me to manifest more of my purpose by helping you all. Like for real, for real. Like, I don't even know what's in me that makes me want to do that. I'm still studying myself. What makes me want to help people at this scale? You know, that's it's just something that's in me innately. And when you study yourself and you find what gives you the most joy and the most passion in the world, you got to double down on that. <laughs> you got to double down on that. You understand me? So, you know, this has been um, How to Create a Supermind, part one. You know, I just, I, I had it on my, on my heart. And I know that, you know, some of you all are going to take this and this could be the game changer for you. This could really, really be the game changer for you, right? For those that want to make sure that you get into BWO, make sure you text BWO. Um, 2323 We're going to be having a soft launch soon. I have a coaching program. It's only going to be 100 people that is going to be allowed into this. I won't be able to take more than that. 100 people only. I'll let you know what that process looks like. The team is really coming together. I've been seeing a lot of different people. I've had probably like five meetings today that were high level. It's going to be different. It's going to be different. So I appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all. Uh, man, continue to grow, continue to develop yourself, and continue to see yourself. Remember that. You have to see it for yourself. Write down what is my mental image of my life. And I want you to write that down where you see yourself. How many times people ask, where do you see yourself in 10 years? If you don't have a strong mental image for it, it cannot develop. You need to see it in order to believe it, in order to become it. So see it, see it, see it. Be it, be it, be it. See it, see it, see it. Be it, be it, be it. Right? Write it down. I will this, I will that. I can go back and show you things that I've written down that have become real. Because writing it down is the first work that you've done to creating and producing it. People often say, man, it is, you know, that's simple, right? Sometimes people are there just to remind you. Remember? The greatest reminders in our life are angels, man. They give us the reminders we need to stay on point because the world is not full of good reminders. The world is full of great distractions. If, if I would spend a lot of time outside, if everything outside reminded me to tap into who I am, to develop my path, to increase in my goals, to stay focused. But when I walk outside, everything is trying to grab my attention, not help me focus my attention. So you have to re remember when there's people that are trying to remind you, right, of who you are, what you are, of what you should do, of what you learn. Those are the angels.
those the angels. So, peace, family. Tap into your supermind. Make sure you get that bundle pack that comes with a lot that just click text be text bundle if you want to get that pack. You will just see everything. It's so much you gonna feel like you're robbing me. <laughs> Peace.